Starting new projects for our North State, including more than 600 miles of electric power lines. The shocking details. Plus, with the warm weather moving in, you might be thinking about fixing up the garden, but who should you talk to before doing any outdoor yard work? And a rare respiratory disease broke out at an animal shelter. How you can prevent putting puppies in danger. All that and more starts right now. Live, local, breaking. News you can trust. This is the North States News at 6.30. Good evening and happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the 6.30 News. I'm Shade Brown. Now, we begin tonight in Shasta County. Chris Street will not be Shasta County CEO after the supervisor's vote yesterday, but he now, Street says, has new information about where the county stands financially. Mason Carroll reports. This county is in deep financial trouble, um, so I dug deeper. Since learning he was not going to be Shasta County CEO, Chris Street now wants to share with the public Shasta County does not meet its minimum target for this year's general fund budget. The reserves for Shasta County are 8.9%. That is a third of the plan and is about a half of the absolute minimum. So what exactly does this mean? Well, Shasta County general fund budget is at $218.8 million. The county administrative officer minimum target to hold in reserve is 17 to 25 percent. So the county should have at least $37.2 million. The county took out $10 million last year to use in building the new jail, leaving the reserve at $19.6 million, which is 8.9% of the general fund. Now, Street says that he's going to be passing out these flyers at Tuesday's supervisors meeting so that everyone will be able to see what these county numbers are up close. If you wanted to keep me from, you know, trying to do the right thing as a CEO, now we'll just do it in public. I confirm these numbers with County Auditor Nolda Short. She also shared the county increased the amount that should be held in reserve in 2019 from 5% to that 17 to 25%. And the county has been working since then to meet the increased goal. She also shared the 10 million will be replenished next year. I spoke with Supervisor Chris Kelstrom. He says Street was the one who informed them about this issue, but they've also been working with the auditor to make sure that they're within guidelines. It definitely needs to be looked into. We've been told by um, our auditor controller, Nolda Short, that uh, we are within the guidelines. There's um, apparently a, a repayment of money that's going back in there, and at that point, we'll be we'll be in you know good shape. And Short added their ongoing goal as a county should be to bring it to closer to $37 million. And you can watch Street's full interview on our website, krcrtv.com. All right, PG&E is on track to underground more than 600 miles of electric power lines by the end of this year. Now, according to PG&E this year, they have undergrounded 256 miles to date, and there are more projects coming to the North State. Now, this is part of their larger plan to underground 10,000 miles across the state to reduce wildfire risk. Spokesperson Paul Moreno says they will begin two projects in Shasta County beginning in mid-April. One is in the Happy Valley area, which will underground 32 miles. The other in Conwood along Gas Point Road will underground 37 miles. Morano says their goal is to reduce wildfire risk and make their equipment more reliable. You have eliminated by more than 99% the chance of an electric fire caused by power lines when the power lines are underground. But there are also many other benefits for customers as well. It's more beautiful not having overhead power lines, and uh, it also means protection from cars hitting utility poles and causing outages. Murano says most of their focus this year and next area are in Shasta, Plumas, and Butte County, but they have projects across the North State. Now, as the weather is set to warm up a bit this month, you might be getting ready for some outdoor gardening projects. pg and &E is reminding residents to do so safely. Now, they say April is National Safe Digging Month. Well, I've never heard of that, but cool. That means if you're planting a tree, doing some basic gardening, or replacing a fence, pg and &E is asking you to call them first before digging. Now, this is so you can avoid damaging underground utility lines. Ground is drying out a little bit, and we're getting out there and doing those home repair projects, and that's the time you need to call 811 so that they can come out here. 
pg e says it can be a costly mistake because repairing an underground utility line could cost upward of $3,500. They also asked residents to call 811 at least two days before planning on doing any outdoor yard work. All right, and here is a uh, time lapse in Butte County. This is the Deer Creek Highway 2 camera brought to us by PG&E. We can see the clouds rolling in, but let's find out how much rain is coming our way. First alert meteorologist Brian Schofield is in the Weather Center. Hey, Brian, what are we expecting? <laughs> rolling in, rolling, rolling out. In. Yeah, let me show you what rolling in did. Look at that rainfall roundup right there. Shasta College checking in, Redding as well with Red Bluff and Orland and Chico, about a third of an inch to almost uh, two inches there. With Lakehead, that's an impressive number right there. Uh, checking into the coast with our friends out in Eureka and Arcata and of course Garberville and Redway checking in and between Alder Point and I believe Ruth you get Xenia and you got a little over an inch there. Impressive to see Klamath and uh, certainly uh, Crescent City check in with uh, over an inch of rainfall. There's Arcata, Covlo and Bayside checking in with a third to about a half an inch. So just beautiful stuff to see. Just adding to those wonderful totals and you get a little closer in and we are watching things happen across our valley. I'll tell you, see right there, some impressive stuff still rolling on through, not quite into the city, but just on the outskirts for sure. Some heavier stuff there. Watching a couple cells down to the south. I haven't seen any lightning strikes with these. Let me show you right there and right there, the Rancho Tehama Preserve right there, a reserve right there. And uh, you see some down to the south that are just kind of holding together. Keep my eyes on those, but a rain free weekend coming up in your first alert forecast. All right, thank you so much, Brian. Many puppies in quarantine after the Tehama County Animal Shelter had two litters of puppies that brought in the disease called distemper into the shelter. Now, distemper is a contagious disease that typically affects a dog's respiratory system. The Tehama County Animal Shelter says this is the first time in three years that they have seen the rather uncommon disease and modern day vaccines typically can reduce a dog's risk to almost zero. The virus itself goes away. Um, it just can take a few weeks. So most of these puppies, we do a 30 day quarantine and we do routine testing throughout that to make sure that their um, distemper values are improving. Essentially, they're, you know, they're working their way towards being negative. They're cleared, um, you know, there's no risk there at this point. So, or the risk is very minimal. And um, again, they're safe to adopt out and, and move on to new homes. All those dogs in quarantine will be safe to adopt after they test negative and receive the distemper vaccine. The shelter, the shelter asks those in the community to please vaccinate your dog as it will help reduce the risk of spreading these kinds of diseases. After the break, the school to prison pipeline getting renewed attention on Capitol Hill. Sinclair Report is next. The time right now is 637. I'm Shadé Brown and this is North Suits News. A Shasta County man was sentenced last night to more than 20 years in prison after a shooting in Lakehead two years ago left two people hospitalized. Officials say in April 2021, Silas Heselberg arrived at the Salt Creek boat ramp and proceeded to shoot at two men and yelled racial slurs. Now, this incident was then investigated as a hate crime and ultimately left both victims in the hospital recovering from the shooting. Now, Heselberg was sentenced to 20 years and four months in prison and will be required to serve 85% of that. Prosecutors trying to get the maximum sentence of 32 years. In Colorado, authorities arrested a 19-year-old for allegedly plotting school shootings in the Colorado Springs area. Now, William Whitworth was arrested by the county sheriff's office last week. The district attorney's office notes Whitworth identifies as female and goes by Lily. Police say they went to Whitworth's home after receiving calls saying she was being violent and making threats. According to an arrest report, Whitworth admitted to planning a school shooting during questioning. Officials also found materials in the home de detailing some of the plans. Now, Whitworth preliminary hearing is scheduled for May 5th. And looking larger now, according to some lawmakers, lowering uh, crime could start with increasing education. National correspondent Kayla Gaskin reports. As Congress works to address crime rates in the nation's capital. Crime has risen dramatically. Education levels have plummeted. Republican Congressman Gary Palmer taking some heat for this exchange with D.C. Council Chairman Phil Mendelson. Your schools not only dropout factories, they're inmate factories. 
No, I'm not saying all well, of them are you. excellent, but I would not say that they are uh, factories for crime. Mendelssohn calling Palmer's statements racist and offensive in his own statement to NBC News. In 2022, D.C. schools saw some of the biggest drops in math scores in the country, according to the nation's report card. I certainly wouldn't have put it the way that the congressman put it. But it is true that there is a direct link between student proficiency in math and reading and incarceration. Data shows 85% of juveniles who commit crimes are illiterate and two thirds of students who are not proficient in reading by the fourth grade will end up either on welfare or in jail. Without education or quality education, our children are already imprisoned. They just haven't slammed the jail say our door yet. Prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump taking up the issue by joining a lawsuit against Baltimore City Public Schools. High school graduation rates in the city hitting a nine-year low. Our kids are falling further behind. And they've been falling further behind for years. In Illinois, not a single student can do math at grade level in 53 schools. No students can read at grade level in 30 schools, according to reporting by WirePoints, citing state data. While Congress has stepped in when it comes to D.C.'s crime laws, they left the Capitol's public education system alone for now. The topic could come up again when D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser testifies before the House this May. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Showers gradually coming to an end. We're decreasing the wind as well, and we have a nice little warm-up, however brief, coming up for the weekend. I'll show you what to expect for next week as well in your first word forecast coming up. And up next, an update on a cancer center in Chico. Experts are saying opening day can't come soon enough. Construction is expected to start soon. We'll tell you when. An update tonight on the Enlo Comprehensive Cancer Center coming soon to Chico. Hospitals officials last April told us construction on the cancer center was set to happen sometime this year. Now we followed up with them this morning and they say they're still on track and plan to break ground sometime this summer. Now the hospital says right now the project management team, architect and contractors are working together on the design process. They decided on a three story building, which will be more than 100,000 square feet. This comes as new data points to a critical physician shortage across California. Is building a facility like this really is sort of like the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Physicians in those subspecialties want to work in an area where they can have a collegial uh, relationship with their fellow physicians. They want to have all the best technology. They want to have space available. And building this is actually going to bring them here because everything that they want and need to serve patients well will be in this center. She says that Enlo is in serious need for more space right now, noting that doctors are trying to see about 90 infusion patients a day in a space that will that was built for only about two dozen patients. In the last year and a half, they've uh, raised $12 million for the project. They expect the total cost to be somewhere around $120 million, if not more. The doors are expected to open in 2026. Comes after near record low numbers of the fish returned to California's rivers last year. And it's time to chime in. Here's another video of Smokey the Cat. We saw Smokey earlier this week, but we couldn't resist featuring them again. This was submitted by to Toby Goldbeck. Well, there you go. This was captioned, Smokey loves daybreak with Nazi. Thank you, Toby. Now let's head on over to the Weather Center with First Alert meteorologist Brian Schofield. I like the cat. You like the cat? I like Toby. No, <laughs> because the cat's not watching what? us. <laughs> Cat has picked the wrong show. No, they're no great in the morning. <laughs> the morning is very captivating. Oh, captivating. I can't, you know, anyway. All right, take a look. See what's going on. Maybe we'll get a couple animals that watch our stuff, you know? Yeah. Maybe a llama or something like I'm that? I'm thinking of a bunny. A bunny, rabbit. Hey, yeah. Perfect timing on that one, right? You got 50s <laughs> along the coast. Should be a good uh, weekend, really, especially end of the weekend to really just get into Easter as well. Uh, area gusts still not impressive, uh, and that's good. We said it would be breezy and there'd be gusty at times, and certainly we felt all of that, but we're not looking at anything dramatic there, and those are winding down as well. Uh, nice to see the forecast start to shape up as advertised, especially. We love that when it all works out the way you want it to. We know we'd still see some uh, showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms the latter half of the day. I haven't seen any lightning with these, but look at that around the Rancho Tehama Reserve and around Red Bank over there and moving through 
folks in uh, Derryville got a front row seat to that as well as Los Molinos. Just checking that out. That hasn't really proved to move more east. It's really moving more to the north. So it's from a uh, southerly flow just kind of pulling up some more moisture there. And you can see it looks like some heavier cells. Uh, but in the, for the most part, those will wind down later on. Certainly tomorrow, we're not looking at anything going on. Mix of clouds and sun, so some clearing. I think this will be a great weekend. I mean, well, don't overdo it. Great would be an operative word for maybe another week or two from now, but certainly will be decent and, and relatively dry. And when you end the weekend off in the 70s inland, uh, I think that's doing pretty well. And here comes the next round of moisture. And it looked like, and timing is everything, it looked like it was going to get in by even Sunday night. But for the most part, it's a Monday event before we see any of that. So all we get is a mix of clouds and sun for the entire weekend. So. End off the weekend for you folks along the coast in the 60s. Nice. We'll bring in some rain on Monday and uh, maybe a little uh, hit or miss shower on Tuesday into Wednesday before we dry things up there after high pressure moves out and the temperatures fall accordingly. But high pressure moves westward and that's what's raising those numbers up into the lower 70s inland. That's what you can expect. Uh, dropping the temperatures down once again early next week. Even inland areas will likely see a little shower too on Monday. Once again, it looks more impressive on that uh, graphic, which kind of just showed in the precision cast. But I don't think we'll see it look, uh, you know, be as impressive as some of the stuff we've already seen come through, getting a half an inch to even over an inch in many areas. 40s for tonight. Hay Fork in the 40s, 30s for Weaverville. I see Easter sticking around with the 70s for the end of the weekend in Redding as well. And you know, just nice temperatures next week. Even in the 60s, that's pretty nice. It's a little bit below normal this time of year, the lower 60s, but upper 60s are right on track with what we should be seeing. Got those uh, lower 70s to middle 70s popping up for Chico. A great forecast for the weekend there too, especially when we start to see a little more sunshine. Just kind of move on in, that's great to see. Overnight lows dropping down back into the 40s again after getting to about 50 degrees because of the warm temperatures over the weekend. More sunshine on the way toward the end of the week. So plan on scouring out some of those clouds by Thursday and Friday. Here is your weather window. Weather window presented by the National Weather Desk. As the saying goes, from drought to deluge. This was the first time in a long time that we're able to see scenes like this from Austin, Texas. An all day soaking beneficial rain. Austin Bergstrom Airport set a record on Thursday of 1.88 inches. It's been since August that the area has seen a rainy day such as this, but it'll take many more to totally get out of their severe drought. For more content like this, follow the National Weather Desk on Twitter. Stay with us. If you still don't have Easter plans, we have a few options for you after the break. A lot of fun events happening this Easter weekend, and we're here to tell you just about a few. In Chico, a local restaurant will get a visit from the Easter Bunny Sunday, available to take pictures with the children and live bunnies. Hello. So if you're looking to take your kids out, hop on down there. There will be going on from on Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Cozy Diner on Mangrove Avenue in Chico. And if you're looking for another fun, family and friendly event way to celebrate Easter, the Mount Shasta Ski Park is putting together an egg hunt along the ski runs. Now that's happening this Sunday at 9 a.m. They say every egg contains a prize. You could win amazing ski park swag, food discounts and of course candy and a special bonus. If you find the golden egg, you'll win the grand prize of a season pass for one youth and one adult. And tomorrow, our very own Nazi David will be at the Lakehead Bunny Festival. That is such a cute video. It starts within, uh, with an egg hunt at 9 a.m. at Canyon School, then a parade at 1030 a.m. on Lakeshore Drive. Plus, there will be a free kids carnival, $5, a hot dog lunch, and so much more put on by the Lions Club. And we'll be right back. Look at that. NASA and SpaceX launched a rocket early this morning from the space station, well, Space Force Station in Florida. Now it's equipped with a NASA instrument called Tempo. The device is the first space based device to monitor, uh, monitor major air pollutants from above. It can monitor conditions from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans. Now, this is SpaceX's 23rd year uh, launch this year. Wow. 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot of that interesting stuff really cool. going on. Right? I know, a lot over of our heads. <laughs> right? It is over yeah. my head, actually. Most it of is, it. actually. Yeah. Over our head, legitimately head over right. our heads. Yes, <laughs> off in space. Got 60s checking in for tomorrow. Enjoy those. We have 70s around the corner for your Easter. All right, thank you so much, and thank you for watching and welcoming us into your home. Have a good night. Local breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News 7 at 7. Good evening and welcome to the 7 at 7. I'm Shade Brown. We begin tonight in Shasta County. Chris Street will not be Shasta County CEO after the supervisors vote yesterday, but he now says Streets he has new information about where the county stands financially. And that's where we start our top seven stories of the night. This county is in deep financial trouble, um, so I dug deeper. Since learning he was not going to be Shasta County CEO, Chris Street now wants to share with the public Shasta County does not meet its minimum target for this year's general fund budget. So what exactly does this mean? Well, Shasta County general fund budget is at $218.8 million. The county administrative officer minimum target to hold in reserve is 17 to 25 percent. So the county should have at least $37.2 million. The county took out $10 million last year to use in building the new jail, leaving the reserve at $19.6 million, which is 8.9% of the general fund. Now, Street says that he's going to be passing out these flyers at Tuesday's supervisors meeting so that everyone will be able to see what these county numbers are up close. I confirmed these numbers with County Auditor Nolda Short. She also shared the county increased the amount that should be held in reserve in 2019 from 5% to that 17 to 25%. She also shared the 10 million will be replenished next year. I spoke with Supervisor Chris Kelstrom. He says Street was the one who informed them about this issue, but they've also been working with the auditor to make sure that they're within guidelines. Reporting in Reading, Mason Carroll, The North States News. On Thursday, we shared the frustrations of some in downtown Reading regarding the new pay for parking system. And on Friday, I spoke to a few businesses that approve of the new model. Apricot Lane, the first tenant to open in Market Center, told me that parking has become easier for their customers and turnover has been evident out front of their store. The owner of Rosé and Fusion Lounge says he's a huge proponent for the system, but admits there are kinks that must be worked out. Finally, Zoe's Travel Shop has noticed much more accessible parking for their customers. They say residents will eventually learn to adapt. I own a travel business. People are going all over. Everywhere they go, they have to pay and park. And I kind of remind them sometimes when they're like, ah, uh, you know, and I, the more we do it, they'll get used to it. And they'll realize, well, this is how it is. Anywhere I go, I have to pay and walk and park. And so it's... It's just the change, and Reading has sometimes hard with change, so once they get used to it, I think it's going to be super easy, and it's going to benefit from it. For the North States News, I'm Sam Comenti. You know where there's definitely no parking? The dance floor. Just remember that, okay? <laughs> that you can be sure of. All right, no parking there. All right, rainfall roundup. Look at this. Paradise checking in. McLeod, got Mount Shasta, Dunsmere. Uh, Chester, Alturas as well, obviously varying totals, but most of them creeping up towards an inch there too. Our friends along the coast and even inland areas like Ruth, but look at that, oh, no, an inch and a quarter plus a few and nickels there. Uh, Trinidad checking in with a big number, Oric, Alder Point, Fortuna and Eureka, just great rainfall totals. Take all we can get. There's still some left over here. We're watching that go to the city of Shasta Lake. Keep that in mind. It's really right on your back doorstep too, and along the 299 as well down to the south. So we're watching that as well. And really a couple cells that are holding together pretty well. Nothing's been issued on those, the sphere weather or anything like that. But nevertheless, that's a lot of rain coming up in a very short period of time. So there'll be some localized flooding, maybe some dry creek beds filling up with that. Uh, out near Pascenta and around Valley Road, it looks like right there. So keep that in mind. Let all that pass. Your full forecast coming right up. The focus of water management concerns in Trinity County center around the Trinity River Restoration Program, a long-standing agency who oversees releases from Trinity Lake in pursuit of restoring the river habitat. Right now, those releases aren't making sense to many. High release volumes persist despite Trinity Lake having the lowest percentage of its historical average of any major reservoir in the state. 
I spoke with the Trinity Fly Shop, who sees and lives the issue firsthand to better understand what this has meant. Owner Herb Burton says it's not high releases themselves that are the problem, it's the timing. It's been difficult for people to accept and try to adapt to something that has happened so quickly. And so it's impacted uh, our fishing industry, you know, the guide service and the retail sales, along with recreation, anybody that's looking for lodging, VRBO, restaurants. And then, of course, too, only time will tell how this all will impact Trinity Lake and the resources up that way. Now, I have connected with the Trinity River Restoration Program and will be speaking with them on Tuesday to address these community concerns and more broadly their decision-making process. Reporting in Lewiston, Preston Dunyon, The North States News. Many puppies in quarantine after the Tehama County Animal Shelter had two litters of puppies that brought in the disease called distemper into the shelter. Now, the distemper is a contagious disease that typically affects a dog's respiratory system. The Tehama County Animal Shelter says this is the first time in three years that they have seen the rather uncommon disease in modern day vaccines typically can reduce a dog's risk to almost zero. All those dogs in quarantine will be safe to adopt after they test negative and receive the vaccine. The Tehama County Animal Shelter asked those in the community to please vaccinate your dogs as it will help reduce the risk of spreading these kinds of diseases. And Lowe's Comprehensive Cancer Center is still on track to break ground this year. Officials saying Friday it's set to happen sometime this summer. The center is slated for Miriam Park off Bruce Road in Chico. The hospital says right now the project management team, architect, and contractor are working together on the design process. They decided on a three-story building, which will be more than 100,000 square feet. This comes as new data points to a critical physician shortage across California. Is building a facility like this really is sort of like the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Physicians in those subspecialties want to work in an area where they can have a collegial uh, relationship with their fellow physicians. They want to have all the best technology. They want to have space available. And building this is actually going to bring them here because everything that they want and need to serve patients well will be in this center. In the last year and a half, they've raised $12 million for the project. They expect the total cost to be somewhere around $120 million, if not more. Doors are expected to open in 2026. Reporting in Chico, Munasadic, the North States News. The second ever Tough Enough to Wear Pink Trail Ride event and fundraiser is happening tomorrow morning. This Red Bluff fundraiser is for St. Elizabeth Community Hospital and specifically their oncology department. North State locals looking to get out of the house, ride a horse, and enjoy some food can do so. And you're also giving back to the community at the same time. Two trail rides will be led tomorrow morning, followed up by a barbecue in the afternoon. I spoke with the creator of this fundraiser on why it's so important. We are passionate about it. I am a cancer survivor myself. Um, my sister and only sister, um, she expired from cancer. I've always been passionate about doing anything we can for that cause and because the funds are, are kept right here in Tehama County and our local folks are the ones that benefit. Last year, this event raised $6,000 and they're hoping to top that this year. Gibson added that the funds go towards a new high resolution monitor that is used for 3D mammo screenings and will overall help doctors and patients receive more accurate and quicker results. Reporting in Reading, Anna Montemore, The North States News. And there's still a lot more to come tonight on the 7 at 7. State lawmakers have introduced more than 400 anti-LGBTQ bills this year. How the White House is responding and more in our cover story of the night. But first, here's a live look over Reading from our House of Rude Law Skycam. We're looking forward to a mostly dry Easter weekend. The full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. The time right now is 7.08. I'm Shadi Brown and this is the North States News. Just yesterday in Butte County, the Chico Unified School District Board decided to maintain a policy that allows children privacy regarding their gender identity and orientation. Now, the board voted three to two, allowing schools to keep a child's gender identity a secret from their parents. And dozens of people spoke in support of gender expression and the rights for trans children. Everybody has a right to privacy, even children, and uh, I'm here to, to support that. These children may see 
the hate and prejudice at home for people just like them and feel the only place they can truly be themselves is at school. And looking larger now, a new analysis from the ACLU shows state lawmakers have introduced more than 450 anti-LGBTQ bills this year. Many target transgender youth and more than a dozen saw legislative action this week. Now, the White House and Supreme Court are weighing in as Amy Kelly reports in our cover story of the night. This has been one of the worst weeks for of 2023 so far in terms of anti-LGBTQ bills. The White House, several states, and the Supreme Court are taking action on transgender rights and restrictions. The Biden administration is proposing a new federal rule involving transgender athletes. It wouldn't stop schools from limiting their participation on teams that correlate with their gender identities, but it would make total bans a violation of Title IX. I want to say directly to LGBTQI plus kids, you are loved just as you are. A new law in Kansas is set to prevent transgender girls from playing on gender correlating teams. That's after the legislature overrode a veto yesterday. In North Dakota, the state passed 10 anti-LGBTQ bills just on Wednesday. And in North Carolina, six bills introduced this week take aim at sports participation and gender-affirming treatment for minors. There's this whole false narrative that trans kids just walk in and can start taking hormones or get surgery. We believe kids ought to be given a chance to resolve their uh, confusion about their sex. In light of such legislation, some young people are speaking out, like during this recent rally in Washington. They cannot outlaw the transness and queerness out of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. All right, take a look at our 12 hour precision catch. You see, even through this evening, later this evening, we'll still see centrally located uh, showers, maybe even a few thunderbooms. Not out of the woods yet on that, but this weekend, much improved. Taking a look at that in your first word forecast just ahead. Well, it looks like the Easter Bunny won't have to bring an umbrella this weekend. Ah. First alert meteorologist Brian Schofield is standing by with the latest. Hey, Brian. I didn't know the bunny had one. I, I mean, they Very good. prepared, right? Like the Energizer Bunny. Just always prepared, always moving along. Take a look. Yeah, those, these clouds are going to start to wind down as well. Temperatures right now, uh, upper 50s. How about how do upper 60s to lower 70s, even some middle 70s sound? That's exactly what we're going to see for the end of the weekend. Still have some showers in the picture right now and a little heavy batch there sliding on into the picture. We're not done with this yet as we're watching these uh, little cells hold together. Once again, we're not seeing lightning strikes with it. We have no advisories with that, but I suspect they are producing some localized flooding right there. So we'll keep our eyes on that. And a lot of that is some uh, maybe lowland areas and stuff, maybe not as populated, but nevertheless, that can run off and uh, be a mess out on the roads, especially some of those back roads as well. So that's holding together pretty well. But later on, especially through tomorrow afternoon, we're not seeing much happening. We're going to keep those in through later on, but that's later on tonight. Later on in the weekend, look at Sunday clearing out pretty well. Then we start to bring the clouds back in again after seeing the mix of clouds and sun for the weekend. And then here's what's brewing, and it looked like timing was not going to be in our favor. That has since changed. We're all happy about that, and that is the way the weather works. It doesn't take much to really make it a change quite a bit and with that timing brings in all of this moisture in for Monday not for Sunday and high pressure sticks around and the timing of that it doesn't really even leave until Monday so I guess we have a better chance of getting some nice weather this weekend than the opposite of that so nice to see there's your brief warming high pressure slides west instead of east immediately for the weekend but yes it will have to move out of the way eventually and then that'll be for next week and you can see the temperatures fall from there that's high pressure leaving the area but as it pokes on into the west oh yeah good stuff there right there easter weekend we love to be able to brag about it if we can hiding those eggs everyone hide eggs still you do are you coloring eggs for the weekend oh okay my mom and dad always hated jelly beans, not individual, like in the package. <laughs> yeah. you, oh, you don't know what jelly beans? Come on now. We'll talk about that at the end of the year. I thought that was much better than the rotten eggs, I'm telling you that. I like eggs today, but I like jelly beans better, I think. Anyway, 40s overnight. Plan on those. 30s across. I'm talking to Sade, not my own brain. Don't worry. <laughs> Got upper 60s to middle 70s for the weekend. Really upper 60s for uh, early next week as things start to change up for us. You see as high pressure moves out, temperatures do drop by midweek, but we also add in a little more unsettled weather next week, but not impressive. Just nevertheless, we'll take all the moisture we can get, and we'll probably see a couple days of 70s, truly, uh, now that the, we know the high pressure is building 
trickling in for the at least the end of the weekend into early next week. As it pushes out, yes, the numbers do come down a little bit, but sunshine still gets in the picture by the end of next week. So it's a short-lived warm-up into the 70s, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities for the next oh, 10 days or so that on the very end of that, that we see the upper 60s, lower 70s pop in again. Overnight lows, not dramatically cold either, staying out of the 30s into the 40s and into the 50s overnight. Enjoy your Easter. Jelly beans? No? Really? <laughs> Really? No. I don't know, Brian. Thanks. I mean, they are substituting the eggs for potatoes in our last show. Oh, there show, it is. So, yes. you know, egg prices are high. All right, let's look locally now. Head on over to KRCRTV.com and check out in case you missed it. Up first, in Butte County, a man wanted for several crimes was arrested after he led police on a brief chase from Paradise to Chico. Now, this happened on Wednesday near Skyway and Jewel Road in Paradise. Police say Christopher Avey, who is known to them for previous car theft and multiple storage unit burglaries, was sitting in a stolen car out of Chico nearly six months ago. When Avey, when Avey saw the officers, he took off driving erratically until he made it to an apartment in Chico. Chico police found him nearby and arrested him, and he was booked on several charges from a stolen car, possession of a gun and drugs. Also in Butte County, a new cannabis dispensary is opening its doors in Chico. It's called Embark. They welcomed their first group of customers yesterday afternoon during a ribbon cutting ceremony. They're holding a soft opening through the 19th with a grand opening on 420 or April 20th. Embark is only the second dispensary to open in Chico since the city council began allowing cannabis businesses to expand a couple of years ago. Now, under an agreement with the city, Embark and other cannabis dispensaries will pay about 5% in fees to the city, which will go towards future city projects. And of course, you can get all the day's news anytime with our KRCR News Channel 7 app. Just search KRCR's device in your app store. All right, there's still a lot more to come tonight on the 7 at 7. Two black Tennessee lawmakers were expelled when they protest in support of gun control. What social media is saying about the situation next. Back looking a bit larger now, let's head on over online and find out what's trending. Up first, yesterday, two black Tennessee lawmakers were expelled for protesting to support gun control. Now, this comes after the deadly school shooting at a Christian school in Nashville. However, there were three lawmaker uh, protesting. The third involved person is white and the state house voted not to expel her. Now today, Vice President Kamala Harris met with all Democratic state lawmakers there, including the three who face expulsion. And now the majority of the Nashville Council members are saying they will be voting to reinstate at least one of the lawmakers. The meeting to do so will take place next Monday. Up next, Star Wars at the Star Wars celebration event today in London. Disney and Lucas Films announced there's more films and TV shows about a galaxy far, far away coming soon. The creators announced three films are on the way and a new series coming to Disney Plus in August. Fans are especially excited about the first film hitting theaters. The film will be following the events of Rise of Skywalker and will focus on Rey as she builds a new Jedi Order. And lastly, happy Easter weekend, everyone. Today is Good Friday, celebrated by Christians around the world, traditionally recognized as the day Jesus Christ was crucified. But people everywhere are celebrating Easter weekend with carnivals, sweet treats, and egg hunts. And we'll cover lots of Easter events over the weekend here in our North State. So make sure you hop on back tomorrow and Sunday. We called for you all to ban assault weapons, and you respond with an assault on democracy. We're gonna to continue to fight to ensure that more lives are not lost to the epidemic of gun violence. Coming up, Tennessee Republican expelled two Democratic lawmakers during a protest calling for more gun control in the aftermath of a deadly school shooting in Nashville. That and more tonight at 10 on Fox 20 and at 11 right here on KRCR News Channel 7. Up next, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the highway. State Trooper held a bunny who was lost on the side of the highway. The moment of the day is up next.
Time for our moment of the day. Troopers in Minnesota made an Easter rescue this week. Now two officers found this rabbit on the side of a highway. They believe it was someone's pet, but it's still a mystery how it got on the side of the road. Now troopers took him to a local humane society, which checked him out and they said they uh, sent it to the bunny rescue and workers there are currently trying to find his owner. That's really cute and I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, how did it get on the side of the road, Brian? <laughs> there's got there's so many more. There has, for he this just one. hopped on. In. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There, yeah. You got me on that one. All right. Uh, I tell you, you got 60s on the way. Plan on it. Plan on really a nicer weekend ahead as we end the weekend off in the 70s. Can't yep. beat that. You can't beat no, that. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. Uh, Jimmy Gemmel is up next, I believe.